Hi guys, welcome to Monitoring and Evaluation Made Simple. I'm your host, Coach Alexander. If you're here for the very first time, do well to subscribe to this channel because I regularly post updates on MD. So today we're going to be looking at another interesting topic. What is data collection? Now you'll realize that this data collection is a very important component of m and I prepared a short presentation. I'm hoping I won't have to spend more than five minutes on this, but I just want you to get to know what data collection is in case this is your first time or you already have basic knowledge, but you want to further your understanding. So let's get right to it, shall we? Okay. Okay, so data collection, as you may be well aware, is a quantitative or quantitative qualitative variable okay so you find that uh, when it comes to collecting this data there there's that data which is objective which we can say is the quantitative part and we have the data which is qualitative which is a bit subjective as we go on you realize you really get to understand what i'm talking about so it is the most important aspect of any research study, okay? And the reason is simple because, you know, when you are undertaking research, you are simply trying to gather an in-depth understanding of what is really on the ground. Take, for instance, if in a school or maybe, let's say, a university, males are doing better than females in a certain subject despite both sexes being given the same level of time the same level of resources the same level of materials one can conduct a research in order to understand what really is the problem why is it that guys are doing better than females in this particular subject despite that they're getting the same level of material but you see guys another thing i should mention is that m and e is not research but there are some similarities between m and e and research because you know when you're talking about m and e you're simply tracking learning and improving but with research you're simply just trying to get new knowledge okay that is all there is to research, really. It's new knowledge. You're trying to fill in a knowledge gap. Okay, so now, factors to be considered before you collect data, all right? First of all, you need to understand what is your objective? Why are you doing this, okay? And the scope is how wide or how deep will be your data collection? A simple example of this is, for instance, let's say you, are, you have a project that you are implementing in a country or in a community. So in that project, you want to reach out to 100 beneficiaries, okay? In terms of we are reaching out to 100 beneficiaries in terms of supplying them with health care. Okay, that's a project that is specifically designed for healthcare. So now, if resources does not allow you to interview all those hundreds, the scope may be, maybe the scope would be that you only interview a small portion, maybe 20 of that 100 or 30. Okay, you sample them out. Okay, but the scope doesn't just end there. It also talks about how much resources, how much money, how much manpower, how much time will be put into this study. Now, the sources of information, where are you going to get this data from? Okay. Where are you going to get this data from? That's the factor, another factor you need to consider. Then there's obviously the quantitative expression. There's the techniques of data collection and the unit of collection. All these are things you need to consider, all right? Fine. Now, 
we talked about the sources of data. We've got both the external, we've got the internal sources of data. So when we talk of the external sources of data, we are simply talking about that data which you get from outside your organization. So this could be primary data, which you go out of your organization to collect. As case an example of this is whereby you go, if you are, let's, let's go back to the example of the 100 beneficiaries. So what do you do there? You go to those 100 beneficiaries, or maybe because of the scope, you limit your scope to maybe 30 beneficiaries, and you go there yourself to collect this data by interviewing them, by asking them questions yourself, not using any third party. But when we talk of secondary data, we're talking about someone has done that collection already and has made a report, and all you do is access that report and then use the information that is in that report to report, to collect data that will enrich your intervention. Then what about the internal data? As the name implies, this is data held in your organization. So now, when we talk of the internal sources of data, like I mentioned earlier on, many institutions and departments have information about their regular functions right in their organization. And this is something which every organization has. You have an organization having a database, unless that organization is not conscious of the fact that they need information to make well-informed decisions, that's fine. But in today's age, we have so many of institutions that are keeping their own data because they want to use it to make well-informed decisions. And it's good management practice. I hope you are reading as I am explaining. I won't be reading everything. So now the external sources of data, again, like I earlier mentioned, this was explained when information is collected from outside an organization, that is simply the external sources. And as the name implies, because internal and the external are different things, the internal is organization, I mean, is information that an organization already has. And the external sources of data is information which they have to source. Naturally, the external is more expensive than the internal. In, in short, you need to spend to, to get to gather information outside. So I did explain about primary data. And this is data that has been collected from first-hand experiences, okay? So this is data you collect yourself. The organization invests its resources, its manpower to get this information itself. They are the authors, they are the owners. If someone uses that data, that person has to reference that. This person, this organization collected this data and they are the owners. Okay, so this is self-explanatory. So now, this is where it gets really exciting. Okay, methods of collecting primary data. So there are many methods, and as you can see, there are five key methods. Okay, so the, I did mention that the most common one, I think this is the most common, is the direct personal investigation whereby you go and interview a group of people but then you've got the indirect oral investigation okay you don't do it yourself but you use other individuals to do it for you okay so these are the two which are the most common. And maybe in case you don't know who enumerators are, these are more of uh, people you hire to help you get data that you should have done yourself. 
which you should have collected yourself. And uh, they are very important, you know, because you see, an organization sometimes can be overwhelmed and they don't have the manpower to get this information in a certain timeline. So these are the guys who are important. Then there's the other method, which is investigation through local reporters, questionnaires, okay? Yeah. So now what this means is that uh, you're simply just investigating, okay? Based on what uh, are in the local reports, okay? Then you have investigation through mail questionnaire, Okay, this one is self-explanatory. You send questionnaires via mail. Okay, and obviously this is done because it's a cost-effective way than having to travel to a different state to get information. Actually, let me even tell you the truth. I don't know why it's even in there. I should have edited it. The email is becoming much more much more of the in thing than the hard copy mail okay or maybe yeah it's it's basically email this is me this is mainly the email which you use to gather information from people who are out there okay then investigation through observation okay you are not asking anybody anything you yourself are excuse me, you yourself are making the observation through looking, of course. Okay, so now what are the merits and demerits of this, of primary data, okay? Well, as you can see there, targeted issued are addressed, all right? So for instance, you are doing, I mean, you are the owners of this, collection, this data collection. So I mean, it's you're the owners, you've targeted, and you are responsible for whatever you've targeted. So once you get that, that specific information, you've addressed it, and then it helps you with your reporting. reporting. Then you see the mere fact that you are, yeah, the pep that you are responsible for the collection of this data. The mere fact that it's you who's collecting it, it means that interpretation is far better because if you use the third party to do the collection for you, to do the analysis, or you just got someone's report elsewhere, sometimes it doesn't give you that in-depth understanding that you really need to have. But when you do it yourself, then high accuracy of data, okay, because for obvious reason, if you are the owners of this information, you definitely want to be careful of how you're collecting it, how you're analyzing it, and how you are uh, reporting it. So now, obviously, when you talk of the merits, there are also the disadvantages. And those demerits are clearly outlined. Cost can be a huge problem. And especially if you are talking of an M and D intervention that is big, okay. If you've been to the World Bank site or the IMF site, they have so many indicators, and these are indicators for every country around the world. Now tell me, do those does tracking that information ever come cheap? No. It's actually expensive. It can also be time consuming. Okay, so now I won't touch much on the secondary data. Okay, because I think I've explained this thoroughly. But maybe let us go to how it's collected. Well, you've definitely got different sources you can get this secondary data from. You've got the published sources, you know, international, government, municipal, corporation, institutional. So basically what this is saying is that you can get reports, journals from everywhere. And actually on the internet, it is 
very flooded with so much information, so many reports. Someone can do their thesis using the internet because the internet has just a lot of information. But in cases where that information is unavailable, okay, that's where it might be prudent that you collect that data yourself. So now what is the difference between a, a primary and secondary data? Well, we've got primary data is, uh, this data is collected in real time, all right? It's real time data. But usually when you talk of secondary data, this is past data. Maybe it could, this could be reports done maybe years ago, all right? And then the other difference is that, you know, when it comes to primary data, you are very certain where this data is coming from, from because it is you who has collected it. But sometimes, like when it comes to secondary data, you may not be too sure where this data is coming from or whether it is really credible because somebody can write a report and you were not there when they were doing the data collection, the analysis, the reporting, you were not there. So you are simply relying on a third party that you cannot authenticate everything they did that time when they were doing this study, okay? Of course, they help to give results. They help to give the findings, okay? Uh, the primary data is costly and time consuming, all right? Because in most cases, you're doing it yourself. And it even becomes most challenging if this thing has not been done before. But with secondary data, it is cheap in most cases. Okay, cheap is relative, but it is, I can say it is affordable. Because you can go to the internet, you can do a research using the internet and get what you want. And then you're home and dry. And then uh, it is more flexible. Yeah. Primary data is more flexible. I agree with that. And I'm sure you agree with that because, uh, I mean, you are the owners. It all comes back to you being in control of what you're collecting. You see? If you collect information, you discover that uh, this information was not what you needed. I need to go back and collect other information. You can do that. But with secondary data, the information is already there. You can't change it because that's just how it is. It wasn't done by you. It was done by someone else. Okay. Oh, and then I skipped one. Avoids biasness of response data. Okay, so when we talk of bias, we are simply saying that somebody is uh, more inclined, is not objective rather. They are not objective in their responses. So when you have people like that, it affects the findings, okay? But then with secondary data, you cannot really know whether there was biasness or not. Okay, so in this event, I would like to end here. And now we'll see you on the other side. Thanks very much. Bye.